Welcome to another edition of Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. We have a very special guest, first time on Reaching Out. He is the former governor of New York State. He, Andrew Cuomo, served as the 56th governor of New York State, born into a proud Italian-American family and raised in Queens, just as I was. Governor Cuomo is the son of Matilda, Matilda and the late Governor Mario Cuomo. His father's legacy of public service remains an inspiration in Andrew's life. After graduating from Fordham University and Albany Law School, Governor Cuomo led his father's successful campaign for governor and later served as an assistant district attorney in Manhattan. Andrew became committed to fighting homelessness and in 1986 founded Housing Enterprise for Less Privileged, known as HELP in Brooklyn, which started as a single shelter for families, as has since grown a national leader in the fight against homelessness. And I could go on because he's a HUD secretary. He was also the New York State Attorney General, but we want to get into the questions and answering. So welcome to Reaching Out. Good to be with you, Mr. Floyd, and, and let me thank you for the invitation. And let me thank you for all your great work, uh, Teamsters Local 237 head. Teamsters are a great proud union, not just in this state, but all across the nation. And I've been blessed to have them as a, uh, as a friend for many, many years. Uh, you represent the largest local in New York State, 237, uh, and you've been doing outstanding work, not just for your members, but I think you're a voice for the union movement writ large, and we need that now more than ever. Uh, so uh, God bless you and what you're doing, and it's an honor to be with you. Thank you, and it's a privilege. But, you know, before I begin, I want to say that the Second Avenue subway and the new Mario Como and Kosciuszko, and I can't say it right, you'll say how that bridge is. Uh, I mean, those bridges and, and that subway, is, is you've done outstanding work, the infrastructure. And you know what's not mentioned here? The airports. The airports are first class. I mean, LaGuardia, I believe, is the number one airport in the world now. Number yeah. one. Yeah. So... You know uh, let's let's talk about this a little bit, uh, Greg. You know, my father was governor for 12 years, as as you mentioned, uh, and I learned a lot from him during that period of time. And uh, when he was out of office, uh, one of the things, the commentaries they said about him that was untrue, but but uh, harsh was uh, Mario Cuomo, great speaker, but he didn't get things done. Uh, and uh, that was not true. He did a lot of great things for the state, but he did uh, get uh, frustrated by the legislature very often. And change is hard. You know, change causes disruption. So I think when I got to the governorship, I, I came with that uh, disposition. I had seen that already, and I was there to get things done. And uh, you know, to move this system, uh, is hard. You're moving a mountain. Uh, but I was committed to it, and we did it, you know. Um, and uh, take the new LaGuardia Airport. It went from the worst airport in the country to just won the award for the, uh, the best airport in the country. Uh, Mario Cuomo Bridge was the old Tappan Z, which they had been talking about for 30 years. They traumatized generations, saying, the Tappan Zee could fall. The Tappan Zee had holes. Uh, but they, they, they couldn't get it done. Uh, so we got that done. The Second Avenue subway it was for like 30 years overdue. Uh, we built the Moynihan train station next to Penn Station. Uh, now, Kosciuszko Bridge. I got into trouble on the Kosciuszko Bridge. The, uh, I'd gone over the Kosciuszko many, many times. Uh, one time uh, when I was a young fellow, I was going to work in Brooklyn, I was driving a, an old Fiat, went over the Kosciuszko Bridge, and remember that old grating it had? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. So shaky, it 
broke the hood and the hood of the, <laughs> the fiat uh, uh, almost flew up in my face. But uh, we called it the Kosciuszko. Uh, the, when I first started talking about replacing it, uh, I got uh, very animated phone calls from the Polish community. It's the Kosciuszko. Kosciuszko is the Polish uh, pronunciation, uh, named for General Kosciuszko, who was a Polish general and very helpful to uh, us during the Revolutionary War. So the new Kosciuszko Bridge uh, we also built, uh, and that actually accelerated traffic. The problem with the old bridge, the it was such an incline that the trucks actually had trouble getting over it and had to slow down large trucks and that backed up the traffic. So uh, we did that new bridge, but yeah, I was very focused on actually making change so that when I was done uh, and people said, well, did you accomplish anything? Uh, I could point to what was accomplished. And more than that, you know, people are very uh, skeptical about government nowadays what does it do besides tax me and take my money and talk a lot? So I wanted to show them government can actually get things done, big things. And it can happen in your lifetime, right? Right. Uh, and I think we did that. You know, the more you talk about what you've done, we leave out things. The Midtown Tunnel, which I came through today. You redid the Midtown Tunnel. Yeah. 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 We did the Midtown Tunnel. Uh, the Winsburg we, Bridge. Yeah. The yeah. Midtown Tunnel. Next time you go through the Midtown Tunnel, yeah. uh, notice on both sides, there are these very large steel doors. I see them every week. look almost every bronze. Time. One says Excelsior on one side, which is the state motto, and the other says E Pluribus Unum. Uh, which I added to the state seal out of many one. Those doors uh, we put in after Sandy, because during Sandy, if you remember, the tunnels were flooded. Those doors close like submarine doors, and they interlock, and they're basically waterproof. So next time there's a, God forbid, a Hurricane Sandy, you close those doors, you seal the tunnel. Same thing on the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, um, which we renamed for Governor Hugh Carey. But the Midtown Tunnel, we even changed the tile on the inside. Uh, it was supposed to be blue and gold. The gold uh, tile came out a little yellowish, if you notice next time. So it looks like yes. it's blue and yellow, sure. but sure. Uh, we, we did that. Yes. You know, the, the more we talk, the more I remember and and just in passing things that have been done and improved. Uh, let's talk about the Jacob Reese houses, because recently you you started talking about housing. What happened there and what does that say about NYCHA management? Well, first of all, your guys do a fantastic uh, job at NYCHA. Uh, guys being gender neutral. And you mentioned I was HUD secretary under uh, President Clinton. Housing and urban development is part of the cabinet and it oversees public housing all across the country. Uh, so NYCHA was one of the public housing authorities. The What this nation has done with public housing is a disgrace. It is a federal responsibility. 1949, the uh, country passes a law that guarantees safe, clean, decent housing for every American. That was 1949, Greg. Uh, we started building public housing. NYCHA, many of the buildings were built 1945 through 1965. You have buildings 70 years old. You know, uh, and we, we keep trying to patch them together. Uh, the waiting list for public housing is years long. Uh, 
it has just not been a priority for the federal government. It hasn't been a priority for this country. And we have people living uh, in substandard housing. Uh, we have people on lists to get into that substandard housing. Uh, and we haven't invested the way we should. Look, in the private sector, if somebody has a 70-year-old building, they don't keep patching it up, you know? They take it down and they build a new building. A lot of housing authorities across the country have done that. Uh, I worked with the Chicago Housing Authority where I was actually uh, in, uh, in charge of the Chicago Housing Authority because HUD took it over. But sometimes the best thing you can do is replace the buildings. Stop patching up and build new. You haven't seen that kind of creativity. You haven't seen that commitment. Uh, and it's a shame. NYCHA at one time was one of the best housing authorities in the United States. Uh, but it has a lot of trouble. And we're, we're going through a presidential election right now. Uh, I haven't even heard anyone talking about public housing uh, or affordable housing. Uh, so it it hasn't been a priority, and it should be. All right, you're right, and uh, we probably won't hear anybody talking about uh, public housing. Uh, it's a shame. Uh, since COVID, we've seen the change in New York City as well as other cities. People left as remote work became an option. We've had crime issues that haven't, uh, we haven't felt since the 90s. We're still uh, feeling this four years later. What can be done to heal? Well, I tell you, Greg, this is gonna be a great challenge going forward. And we'll look back at this period uh, of time one day, and we'll say that's where we missed it. That was the turning point. Uh, the turning point is, People don't have to go into cities anymore, right? COVID was transformational and it changed human behavior, social behavior, uh, and the behavior of business. If you had said to somebody before COVID, uh, I can't come to the meeting, but we'll do a Zoom, you know, uh, I, I can't take you to lunch, uh, but we'll do a Zoom. They would have said, forget it. Uh, we don't do business that way. COVID made all of that possible. So remote work is a new reality. I don't have to go into the city. I can stay home and I can do Zoom and it's okay. You can't even get businesses today to get people to come in five days a week. They're still only coming in two days a week, three days a week. So it's now a different dynamic. I don't have to go into the city. I'm going to have to want to go into the city. And that's a different equation. Uh, so now the quality of the city really matters. And if I'm afraid to get on public transportation because it's not safe, uh, if I think the uh, there's a high rate of crime, if I'm worried about homelessness, if I'm worried about quality of life, uh, if the city doesn't have the same positive energy, I'm not going to go in. And it's going to get worse. And the fewer people who go into the city, then it's a, a downward spiral. And we're seeing that. And we're seeing that in cities all across the country, by the way. Yes. Uh, many cities worse than New York. But that is the new reality that the city has to deal with, right? Uh, you have to want to go into New York City. And all these problems that we've been talking about, but we haven't been solving, they are really hurting New York right now. Uh, and it comes at a delicate time because Zoom, remote work, not only can I choose to stay home in Queens or wherever, I can move, Greg. If once you say to me, I can work remotely, 
well, then I can go down to Florida. You know, uh, our generation, you had a lot of people who would be in New York, they would work, they would retire, and then they would go down to Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina. That was the trajectory, right? Right, right. Uh, I'm going to work in New York, but then I'm going to retire down south. The weather is better. It's cheaper cost of living. Well, if you can do that now, why wouldn't you do it now? And we're seeing people leave. You're seeing upper income people leave because we have the highest taxes in the United States of America. So they're saying I'm leaving because I'm, I'm tired of paying the taxes. But you're seeing it all across the spectrum. You're seeing working families, lower income families, homeowners. I was at a Baptist church uh, a couple of weeks ago in Brooklyn. Uh, and the pastor said to me, all my people are moving to South Carolina. Uh, they said they can get more house for the money. It's a cheaper way of living. So uh, this is a new reality for the city. And we have to understand it. And we have to understand it quickly. You're listening to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. With me, very special guest, Governor Andrew Cuomo, former Governor Andrew Cuomo. And we're talking about the state of New York City, the state of these... Uh, New York. So what, what do you think we could do to reverse that trend if there is anything that we can do to reverse that trend? Greg, uh, it's not what we say, it's what we do. It's not our mouth, it's going to be our hands. Show people progress. Show people progress. Because they're not going to believe a politician's speech. They're not going to believe a politician's promise uh, because they've seen that happen too many times. You have to show them, show them that you're going to do something about the homeless mentally ill who are dangerous on the street. Show them that change. Uh, show them that you're closing the illegal pot shops, 2,000 illegal pot shops all across the city. Uh, you know, you walk through the city now, uh, it smells like uh, people are smoking marijuana everywhere. You know, uh, I had a buddy get in the car uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we were chatting a little bit, and I'm looking at him, and I said, are you high? He said, no. But I just walked down Second Avenue. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to show people crime rate is down, quality of life is better, subways are safe, subways are clean. Uh, you're going to have to show them progress. So there's a flicker of hope. And they say, you know what, maybe it's going to turn around. You know, I, I think we missed out when uh, we say, you know what, no more arrests for marijuana. You can smoke marijuana. Because in Canada, I know I was in Vancouver, they treat it like it's a cigar bar. You want to smoke? You go inside and smoke. You come outside, there's no smoke outside. The same thing as a bar. You want to drink? No drinking on the street. You go inside the bar. So I don't know why we didn't just say, you know what, let's set up places that you could go and smoke. Go have your smoke, come outside, and and, and it's smoke free. Why are we letting allowing people just to smoke all over the place? I, I don't understand that. Let them smoke inside. Smoke set up smoke shops for them. Well, Greg, this is this has just been a, a government debacle. Remember what happened. We said uh we were going to legalize the sale through regulated distributors. And the state would pick the distributors, uh, the distributors would pay for a franchise, and they would be highly regulated. And there would only be a certain number uh, all across the state. Uh, what happened instead was they allowed all these illegal shops to open up. And they're still open. And uh, there's no regulation. They can sell to kids. 
you know, to, in, in my mind, we're playing Russian roulette. It's just a question of time before you're going to see somebody die from fentanyl that they bought in one of these illegal stores. So it was never anticipated that this is going to happen. And it still violates the law. That's what's remarkable to me. These, it is illegal to sell marijuana without a license. It is illegal today. Those stores are all breaking the law today. And it's not like they're hard to find. They have a big sign. It says, you know, come here. Come here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. Don't so you can, it's not like we need great detective work. We just don't have the desire or the ability to enforce the law. Enforce the law. And uh, it's, it's symptomatic, but it's one of those things that people see as a sign of deterioration. Uh, and they, they record it up here. There's another thing. There's these pot shops all over the place. Okay. Listen, we had um, a recent Siena poll showed both Mayor Adams and Governor Hochul's approval ratings are at a record low. What do you think is going on? Well, a couple of things. First, I think it's everything we've been talking about. Uh, people get that the situation is deteriorating and they're not happy with it. Uh, and these are reflected in the polls. It's basically, do you think people are doing a good job, the governor, the mayor? No, because I think things are going in the wrong direction. People are very skeptical about the future of New York, by the way. And an overwhelming number in polls say the city is in crisis. So yeah, they blame the people in charge. That's what they're doing. Uh, and that's what they should do. And that's what they've always done, right? Buck right, stops right. on my desk. Sure, sure. So uh, any suggestions? If you were the mayor or the governor at this time, what would you do differently? I would be tackling these issues, uh, you can't do everything at once, but you don't have to either. Take them one at a time and do something about them. Do something about the homeless who are dangerous and who are on the street. Close those pot shops tomorrow. Make a real commitment to affordable housing. Uh, not 100 units here, 200 units here, which is all they're doing. Uh, but we're going to build more affordable housing than any city in the United States. Take NYCHA, which is a phenomenal asset, which has a lot of property on it, Greg, and say, I'm going to stop throwing good money after bad. I'm going to stop patching a 70-year-old building. We're going to build new buildings. Uh it's, it's going to be actual accomplishment. You have to make things happen, make government work. Uh, and people have to see it. And if they don't see it, they're not going to believe it. You no, know, I, I was up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Cambridge, Massachusetts renovated the entire housing authority while people were living there. And I brought some of the residents there and I brought some of the elected officials there and we just couldn't get it done. We had the guy, Russ, Gregory Russ, Greg Russ, who did that work. And for some reason he came here, he couldn't do it because it was just so much red tape and people didn't understand that there's a whole housing authority there that um, just renovated itself. I, I'm, I'm running out of time for this segment, but would you be good enough to come back next week I mean, we, we we haven't gotten through. For you, for you, anything, Greg. Thank you. Uh, I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237. Teamsters, our very special guest, Governor Andrew Cuomo, for, former Governor Andrew Cuomo. I'm going to ask him to come back next week because this, this is too important a discussion. 
and we'll continue our discussion. So this make this part one. We'll come back for part two next week. Thank you.